Hey, this is Phil Lilly, Lilly's Landing Resort and Marina on Lake Tenny Como. We're going to do one cast today. Out here with Jack again. I am right at Fall Creek. Over across the lake from the marina. <coughs> the wind is strong out of the south. They're running one full unit. And I am going to drift from here down, fishing toward the bank with a white mega worm under a float about, I've got about seven feet deep. I heard that Dwayne had a trip this morning and he used a white mega worm. Maybe not this high up, but he was doing really good around Short Creek. I'm not sure if I'm going to get that far down. We'll see. It is Saturday the 27th of November. The lake is busier today than it was yesterday. We had a lot of pontoons go out today. Oh, I'm touching the bottom of so it might be a little bit too deep with the seven feet. But if it's just ticking the bottom, it might be about right. Yesterday was pretty good one cast. I was really happy with how the mega worm did down below Cooper Creek. I am using two pound line. Same thing I had, same rig I had yesterday, except I tied a few white mega worms instead of the chartreuse. But the white and the chartreuse are pretty close. The chartreuse that we use is pretty light color. Got a whole bunch of buzzards down here on the bank. I'm not sure what's going on. Little buzzer convention. Must be something dead. Although I don't see anything. feeding on something right on the bank. It's partially in the water, so I can't really see it. Let me turn this down a little bit. Kind of looks like a fish. does look like a fish. I just can't tell what it is. Well, I 
think I really ought to pull it in and make sure there's nothing on the fly itself. So no first no fish on the first cast. And everything is clean. I do want to stay pretty close to this bank. It's a little bit not quite as deep over here. Then I'll be fishing right along these docks. Looks like Teresa has one down below me in the pontoon. Those are my neighbors, the walkers. Let's get this out a little further toward the bank. I read in the description last night in yesterday's one cast that I, I took uh, my brother-in-law Barry and his son Matt. Barry lives in Venice, Florida. He's a school teacher there. And Matt lives in Fort Worth, and he has his doctorate, and he is teaching graduate school. And um, we drifted night crawlers. Uh, actually, we tried fishing along the bank. Um, like I took the grandkids out. Spot lock, and we didn't do very good, so we started drifting. Well, after the wind died down, we started drifting night crawlers, and um, did really good. They caught seven, eight apiece. Caught some nice ones. I really do think I've got the right depth at this rate I am not going to get down to Shore Creek because I'm doing a lot of adjusting. And as you can tell, adjusting from the back of the boat is not ideal. And here is where Bill Babbler caught the state record brown trout, I believe. He's never told me exactly where he caught it, but this is always my idea about where he was fishing a, a pink Berkeley power worm under a float in September of 2019. And he hooked and landed a 40. I forget that it's over 40 pound brown trout. Just about the same rig I've got, except his rub is probably a little bit longer. He uses a, a seven or eight foot rod when he uses um, the pink power worm. And he was using 6X tippet, which is about the same thing as what I'm using. It's less than four pound line. I've got two pounds. So far, I don't think I've gotten a bite.
wind is all right out of the south and it's blowing me straight down like down here below the big log house I'll have to make an adjustment on my float because it gets it gets, gets a lot shallower down here this is still pretty deep. I'm going to throw in behind this dock, although I, I know there's a lot of wood back there. Could be some fish too. I thought about coming out and drifting night crawlers. Maybe that's what I should have done. Make a beeline down and fish the shallower water. There's nothing happening up here. There's a stump out here in front of this dock that I have to avoid.
got to set about three feet and I'll probably have to go a little bit shallower once I get down here a little foot, little ways. Oh shoot, I just had a bite. Didn't set the hook. He did not hit it very hard. I think I'm already have to set it. I'm already in that shallow water. So I'm about two foot now. Maybe these fish don't like a mega worm up here. Or I'm doing something wrong. That water is really getting dirty too. Really starting to silt up. I got a log right here that I gotta navigate. That's what you see sticking up out there. I've done really good using zebra midges doing this along this bank. Of course, I like to use my fly rod a lot more than I do my spin rod.
Right in here is where I've been throwing, you know, anchoring and throwing a night crawler. And like I said the other day with the grandkids, I caught some really nice fish and Owen hooked one about eight pounds. Seven, eight pounds in here. So I know there's good fish. Right now they're just not interested in a mega worm. Uh -oh. I brought some jigs with me too, but I think I'm going to stay with a mega worm. I'm going to fish down to this next dock and then I'm going to jump and jump down closer to uh, Short Creek. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it that long. Oh yeah, we did catch some chubs in here, so there could be some chubs. Mm, that's not good. Cut the chair. to the bank and then we're gonna run downstream. Okay. <laughs> not enough. The line was not tight. I just missed one. I hooked him for a second.
wasn't paying attention and I had too much slack in my line. Set the camera off and go down to Shore Creek. Okay, we're just below Shore Creek on this bluff side. We're gonna run this bank right down here, down the well, down to the end where the drop off is. set my float. I'm going to go about four feet to begin with and I'll probably have to go a little bit sh shorter. It's kind of deep in here before I get to the corner. There's usually a really good little spot right here. what we call the corner where the bank takes off from the bluff and it comes out. There's a little wash back there. When it comes around and comes through here it really shallows up. Water gets a little faster. It's usually a really good bank for a jig and float or really anything under a float. As soon as I start hitting bottom, I'm going to have to readjust. Was a fish. Oh, I lost him. Oh, I saw my my float kind of bob. A little different bite on a mega. Oh, it's got a bunch of dirt on it too, which means I need to shorten it up a little bit. Move to about three feet. There's also a lot of wood along this uh, bank on the bottom, which I just have to deal with. Stumps, sticks. Ooh, that was a fish. Come on, win.
this plane. It started out really good. Let's go a little deeper. Just so what if I get caught up on the bottom and something's not quite right. I'm just about to the end. Coming up on my trees in the water. down into the heart of these trees. fish a little bit more below these trees. after yesterday's one cast and similar conditions I thought thought I'd do really good
goes to show you some a lot of times in fishing you think you got it figured out when you really don't here's a fish the two bites I got are weren't like yesterday yesterday they were yanking it under today they're just kind of vibrating the the float it's a pretty nice rainbow actually very very fat very heavy for its length Shall I try for one more? Oh, that was a terrible cast. Last cast. This is usually a good little spot. Usually has a lot of fish in it, especially if the water's running. I need to do a countdown. Thank you for watching. Hope you had a really good holiday. We have. All of our company have left, We've gone home, so it's just us now. And tomorrow we'll start cleaning up. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Blake will probably do one cast tomorrow.